everybody, Bane Fly Guys here. Going to be tying a stonefly nymph today. Um, pretty big. I have a fire hole 718 size 6 here with two tungsten beads, um, 4.7 mils. Uh, each one is a gritty bead, and the other uh, is just a regular gold tungsten bead. Um, I like to start my thread right here so I have about enough space to put another bead without touching these two. I just start my thread here because it gives me a good idea of where my body should finish because I need about this much room for the thorax. So start here and work your way back. Um, as you get to the bend of the hook, I don't like to go too far down because I don't want my tail pointing straight down, but I do want it angled a little bit um, and what I do is just build up a little bit of a thread ball here so build up a little bit of a thread ball and I will uh, color it on occasion so here I'll just take a sharpie and make my thread red um, the thread I'm using today is Danville's uh, 210 wax Flymaster plus um, I really like this thread actually go back you really want this thread ball to be tight so do the best you can to get it tight so there is my little thread ball and what this will do is present a little tag um, a little red tag on the end uh, if you see any bare spots just go ahead and touch it up okay so here I just have some turkey biots, and I'm going to face them so that they are facing away from one another. So I get that nice uh, curve away from each other. So here, here I have them. You see how they're curving away? Just make sure they're even. I like to use really long ones, and I like to make them the same length as my body's going to be. So from the part where I started my thread to the end. So I make them right about there, drop them down on either side of my thread ball, and then I don't even look, I just wrap them, and then I look. So now I can see they're pretty decent. They might need a slight twitch, but nothing too serious. And then once you're happy with it, just continue to wrap in. Just continuing to wrap. And these fire hole sticks have a slight curve to them, which is great. Um, and I like to get part of my body started as a slight curve. So. so work your way back, and here's what you get. Your tails are nice and split, pretty even, cuts it right down the middle. So I work back to the front. And somewhere. I am going to add gold ribbing to it, so I toss in the gold ribbing first. Because the profile of a stone fly is flat, I put the wire in on the side. And when I put in my body, which is going to be rubbing, I put that in on the side as well. Because they add to the width of the profile. They don't add any sort of depth. They add to the width, and that's what I want. So I just lock that in a few times, and then I take my body out, which is this, I think it's medium, yeah. Final rib, it's just brown. Um, I don't take a piece out. I keep it right on the spool. So, But if you look at it, there is a curve side and a flat side and what you want to do is go in and make sure that the flat side of the ribbing is facing out facing you okay so again I tie that right in on the side making sure that the flat side is facing me and I'll just loosely tie it in for now so I can kind of move it and adjust it because remember I want it to be on the side. So 
There we go. So now I just set it down and I trim my excess to where I want the body to finish, like right before it. All right, so that's good. Um, now I'll just make some tidying wraps so I really secure it down, making sure it doesn't roll. Sweet. And now I'm going to just do a little bit of a taper, just a little bit. Stoneflies don't really have that much of a taper, if you ever look at one. They really don't have that much of a taper from back to front, so I don't really like to make a big one. Um, but I do make just a little one. Alright, so that's pretty decent. So here you can see I've made just, I mean it's very, very, a very tame taper, it's almost not visible but um, so now I go forward make your wraps forward and you're gonna tie everything in this is your last chance to sort of clean any imperfections up so take your time so now before we start wrapping anything I'm gonna color the body I use white because it allows me to color the body differently and I'm sure you guys know that stoneflies especially here in Maine, the big ones, like I'm tying, are kind of a mix between a gold and a brown. So what I do is do a yellow belly and a brown back. So you get something like that, where it's a dark back and then a yellow belly. And all that does is create sort of a profile that you can see. So now what I do just use your rotary and you can start wrapping this ribbing. Make sure that your wraps are touching because you don't want your wire that you're going to wrap in here, which I might have cut a little short, is uh, going to fall through. You don't want it to fall through. So I just go right to the end where it drops off and oh, do I want to do one more? I'll do one more. And then I'm just going to catch it. Now the catch won't be as neat as you want it to be. You'll be like, eh, it's not that great, but don't worry because we're going to cover it up. Um, we're going to cover it up with dubbing. So if it doesn't look the best, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Okay. So there's our body, looks pretty good. So you see it's pretty light on the bottom, pretty dark on the top. So now I'm taking my wire and I'm just gonna drop it in those ridges. Ooh, it's gonna be close. Drop it right in those ridges. Oh yeah, we got, we got plenty. And then lock it in in the same spot. This is medium wire that I'm using, so it's a little thicker. Um, you can use whatever. This is a good chance for you to uh, sort of experiment with different colors, but I, you know, gold's kind of traditional, so I stick with the gold. But, um, so lock that in. Looks pretty good. And now the first thing we're gonna add are some silly legs. So I have brown here with red speckles. Um, nothing fancy. All I'm going to do is tie in one side. Tie in one side. Uh, make sure it's in the direction that I want it and you can kind of fiddle with it. Make it in a direction. And then I'm going to wrap this piece over. Catch it. And tie it in. So There we go. So this is what I have, and then you can cut it to length, whatever you want. I usually go about to the uh, middle of the tail, right to the end of the tail, that kind of area, right in here. And just grab them both back, and simple. Now they should flare out a little bit, something like this. And that's great, we want them to flare out a little bit. So now, our next step is gonna be to add dubbing, because we wanna kind of cover up this mess, it's not very neat. Um, it's not very clean, but 
we have dubbing, thankfully. So we're gonna cover it up. And you don't want this dubbing to flow into your body. You wanna keep your body available, so use really short fibers. Um, here, I just have some red squirrel that has really, really short fibers. And I just kind of coat it. Let's give it a gentle coat. Nice little even coat here, a little noodle, make your noodle. Um, and then go ahead and wrap it up. Make sure you hold the legs down because they will want to spin on you. But if you tighten it up real good, then they won't they won't spin on you. Um, so I need to add a little more. But you can see it's just a little just a little divider, kind of the switch from the abdomen to the thorax, like just a little fuzzy switch. Um, and it doesn't need to be pretty, it doesn't really need to be perfect. And there. So that is pretty good. After I am done with it, I will come through with a brush and just kind of clean it up and get the fibers, any loose fibers, just kind of clean it up a little bit. And that looks great. Okay, so you're gonna whip finish. And it doesn't need to be anything crazy. Let's do three or four. And what I like to do is instead of working real hard, I'll just put a drop of super glue right on the edge there, right in between where that uh, that first gold bead is going to sit. So I'll just put a little drop in there. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll push the gold bead back. Push it back. And just hold it there. And if you're using liquid super glue, it will set in about three, four seconds. So there we go. And it won't slide forward while you're trying to work. So here's what we got so far. Looks good, looks pretty organized. Um, the next part, you're gonna build up your thread for quite a while. Um, you can add extra weight in this little section if you wanna put a little, um, a little piece of lead weight or something, whatever you wanna put. It's a good opportunity to add some extra weight, although this fly is extremely heavy. Um, once you've built up enough thread so that this won't come forward anymore, I like to add in my second pair of legs. So I'm just gonna keep building it up a little, just a little bit more. All right, and they're gonna go all the way at the back. So same sort of, um, come on, same sort of setup where I'm just gonna tie in one on one side and then make sure it's set where I want. And that looks pretty decent. And then take my second one and just pull it over, pull them both back and set them. If you don't like the way they're set, you haven't done many wraps, so you can just redo it. But I like how these are sitting, so I'm really gonna lock them in, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna pull them up and back. So up, so they're even, and then back. So now I have a good idea where I'm cutting them. And again, I like to go about to the end of the body. Okay. So these will stick out a little more straight and um, they look fine to me. There, actually this one is a little bit longer. There we go, okay. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to build a dubbing loop and we are gonna make a dubbing loop. Now you can connect it um, with, you can connect it to your, and just make a noodle like normal, but by doing the dubbing loop, um, I find that it is much, much easier to 
make the dubbing sort of go around the whole fly. Um, and it kind of just tapers a lot better. So here, I just make my dubbing loop. And I add in uh, this cinnamon color. And it's a longer fiber. You see how it's kind of fluffy? And it's longer. And all I do is just stuff a whole bunch in there. And I'll disperse it as need be. But that's what it kind of looks like. Something like that. So I'll do that. Um, this is kind of thick. But I'll do that just for probably two inches. Maybe three tops if I want it to be really fluffy. So you don't need a lot of dubbing. Okay. So there's that. Looks decent. I'll give it a spin. And uh, what's important is that after you spin it, it'll look clumped. So you're going to have to brush it out. So here it is. You see it's just kind of a noodle, but I will get out of your leg. I will brush it out. With my trusty toothpick, uh, toothbrush, Velcro brush. All right, so that's pretty good. So now we're really going to work all the way to the front basically to the very front, I mean, pretty close to at least. And the goal of this is to cover, almost cover that bead, that second bead. And so we've worked to the front there. I'll lock that in. So there, you see it's a nice little kind of cape. All right, that's locked in. Um, what I'm going to do now is brush it out again just to make sure that it is looking good. And it does look pretty good. So you see how those legs are no longer, um, they're no longer sticking straight. But this sort of, uh, this dubbing loop has pushed them back. So now they look like this, which I think is great. I want them to be sort of the same angle. So now what I do is I pull this back and I work back just a little ways, maybe three wraps, four wraps tops. So I have a little collar to work with. This is our next step and we're gonna put a little hackle on and you don't need a lot, but this is a shoulder feather of a partridge. And the reason I like it instead of sort of the back, the back is a commonly used feather, is that the fibers are much shorter and they're much thicker. They're not as fine. So, like I said before, I don't want the body to be covered up. I want that body to be exposed. So, all I do is strip, strip it down a little bit and I will tie it in on the side. Now these, the stems are really hollow, so they'll flare up and they're easy to tie in and they won't slip. So next, I'll grab it with my hackle pliers. And I lick my fingers and I just kind of work those fibers back as I'm going. I'm working them back as I'm going. You don't need a lot of wraps. I'm probably just gonna do one, two, and try to lock it in on the second one. Okay. So you see this is a very short hackle. It's not long at all. Very, very short. Um, and then just build up a little collar. All right, so then I'll just go around and make sure that things are setting right. And so here, you can see it's just a nice, I like the color, it's like a darker, gives good contrast to it. Um, it sits well, sits down on the fly, makes a really nice contrast, and it's thick. You know, I only did two wraps and it pretty much covers up the whole, the whole fly. So, the last part is I'm gonna add 
a back to it. So here I've pre-cut little triangles um, on the edge here. Just, I don't know, it just looks cool. And what I'm gonna do is push the top fibers apart. Just kind of spread them out, spread them apart. And I'm gonna drop this, uh, this top all the way down past the first bead. I'm gonna drop it down past the first bead. So that's decent. And then I'm gonna catch it. Now, I don't want the thread to build up here because I'm pretty much at my limit of how far I can go. So all you do is take this, turn it, flip it over, you know, get something like that where the two, one is shorter than the other. You'll have to pre-guess that. It's usually if you make it about an inch long, tie it three quarters inch back, maybe not even an inch, but, so that's pretty good. So now, I'm gonna take one wrap to secure it. All right, just one. And then I'm gonna whip finish on top of it. So I'm gonna come up here. You can um, make the collar any color you want. So like this one, I'll just keep it natural. Um, I've done red, orange, yellow, brown. Haven't really picked a favorite yet. Have not done anything crazy like purple or pink or anything like that, but haven't really developed a favorite. So I go with brown quite a bit. But um, so I do four whip finishes one, two, three, four. And that's enough usually to completely cover that. You had a little, there will be a little bit sticking out. That's four is usually enough to get that completely covered of the uh, the thin skin. And I didn't tell you guys, that's what the backing is. It's just mottled brown um, thin skin. This is all it is right here is this mottled brown thin skin. So this looks pretty great. Um, there's our nice big stone fly. It's very, you know, very, very thick, um, very, very productive. The last thing that I do um, is I come in. And I like, you know, they get, they bump the bottom a lot and they get hammered by pretty large fish if, you know, if you get one to take. So I, this thread will break a lot. Um, so I put some UV resin, just make a little, little clear case there. It's nothing special, just a little tiny case. Um, zap it. Zap it. And uh, that that will add a lot of life to your fly. Just that little teeny tiny drop of UV resin will add a, you know, uh, a long, a lot longer lifespan for your fly. Maybe even double the life because I've had flies that I drop in and just nick bottom like once, and my thread starts to come unwrapped. You know, and a good tip: I always carry liquid super glue on the stream with me in case something like that happens. But this glue is a great way to do it. So that's it. There's our fly. Very, very full, very buggy looking, very heavy. Great for trout and salmon. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So thanks for watching.